Hi everybody, Erin here again, and welcome back to Tattered Angels Part 4 Paint Lab, or Paint Lab Part 4. Um, today we're going to deal with different types of mediums. So I picked out three different brands that I have on hand. Uh, the first one we're going to do is just a Pro Art Gesso. This is one of the first gessos I ever had, and I am pretty much out. And all I did, the same for all of these, is I just cut out strips and I applied just a very thin coat of whatever medium we're using on half of it. There's still part of it, I think you can see this really well, there's a line that's just paper and this side has the medium on it. So we did Pro Art Gesso, I did a 13 Arts uh, modeling paste, so here, and I try to apply a little bit of a texture, again it's so white it's very very hard to see, there's a little bit of a texture on here as if you were going to do a stencil or something. I did a soft matte gel. This one is the uh, Prima, or the Art Basics from Prima, using the Finnabar stuff. Just a matte medium, it's just a gel medium. And again, I did it on half. And I know there's other brands of all of these, but I just picked three different kinds. I didn't have another version of either of these, that's why I didn't go with those. We are then gonna compare them to all 10 products, all 10 paints or mists, whoops, by Tattered Angels onto each one of these to see how they work and how they compare. If you want a detailed information about what these paints are like, for instance, how is Plain Jane Baseboard different than Simply Sheer Plain Jane? How are they different? Check out the little corner right up here, the iCard. Um, in my first video, I go into detail about what are all these about. So let's get started. Let's take a look at how the gel medium worked with the different kinds of paint. So this was the gel medium that I used, a soft matte medium, it's a transparent medium. Um, this is what it looks like when it first goes on. It has a, just a little bit of a sheen on the paper. You really cannot tell from a distance unless you kind of check to see if there's something there because it is transparent. All right, so let's compare next to each other. So the glimmer mists. Um, the yellow kind of pooled up on each other. The black kind of took, and mostly because maybe I didn't move it around a whole lot, but you can tell it did kind of the, the glimmer mist. It's the Cheerio effect where all the mist wants to kind of gather into itself, and that's what happened here. It's just it did it in one mass versus little splots, so not the best. 
I will have to say across the board for all of these mediums, the best one is the baseboard. And I'm gonna have to stock up on baseboard because I love to do mixed media and I love to use all these different mediums and I always find that sometimes this is what happens, especially with the gesso and stuff with the glimmer mist. But the baseboard did not do that. Look at the coat. It gave a full even coat, not splotchy. This one's a little bit, but not even that bad. Like if I went back with a second coat, look how amazing that is. I mean, I'm just in love with the baseboard with all of them across the board. The chalkboard, because it has the mist in it again, see how it kind of clumped up together, the mist inside the particles, because it's got a glaze with the gel medium, it doesn't want to let the paint stick to it. Uh, it doesn't have a tooth for it to, go, to gather to, basically. Um, same here, this is the Simply Sheer. Because it's transparent, it just really has a hard time coating it. The black did a better job, probably because it's a darker color, but the yellow really had a hard time kind of sticking to that. Here we have the Glimmer Glam, and because it's a different kind of a paint base, it's got you know a stickiness factor to it, it's gonna stick to pretty much everything, but it still did a much better job just on the plain paper side, which is here, and here you can tell this is where I use the gel medium. Same with this. It just it coated the paper better and did the gel medium. Not bad, but you know, not as good as the baseboard. I'm still loving the baseboard on this. Stained glass, kind of the same effect. Ooh, here we go. So here we have the same effect. It just it gave it a coat. You can see my brush strokes in it. It, it. They each have their own unique way of how they worked, which is fine. The shimmers did not a too bad of a job. It's kind of a, just a nice wash over top of it. It's kind of cool. Uh, the Glimmer Glaze, again, it did a great job just kind of glazing over. It coated it, it did a fine job. I think it was using, I was using the brush in there and sometimes I like to use a different paintbrush so I don't see all the little paintbrush strokes. And then both paints did a great job covering it up. So if you ever did put a gel medium down and you needed to cover it up again with paint or something, then these did a fabulous job. You can't hardly even tell except for my brush strokes underneath that there was a gel medium there to begin with and they both did a good job. I think I was starting to get lazy and just being a little less cautious about my paint strokes. All right, now we're moving on to the texture paste. Now, originally the texture paste looked like this. It was a little bit of an off-white color. Um, here is the paste I actually used. It's just the uh, Finnabar Prima texture paste. It's the white sand, so it feels like it's got a gritty sand inside of it. And let's take a look at each one. Glimmer mists. You can definitely see that there is a glimmer inside of there. The darker color, the gold, kind of got caught in some of the pockets. It did color it to a point. This one, not as much, but you can see that it's got the little flux inside of there. So it did a pretty good job. Again, I still love the baseboard. Now, downside to the baseboard, because it does not have any kind of a glimmer, you're gonna have a hard time seeing the highs and the lows of this. So this is the one downfall to this semi-opaque paint is that it coats it, it coats it great, but you're not gonna see the peaks and valleys as well um, as you would with something like this because the darker color is following in and the glimmer mist is catching and you just really kind of see all the texture in there. That's okay. Chalkboard, again, because it has kind of a chalk effect in it, you're gonna see, let me catch that. You're gonna see some of the, ooh, there we go. You're gonna see some of the peaks and valleys in this. Some of the chalk pieces fell down into the grooves. Same with here. You just really kind of catch the difference in the texture there a little bit better. Um, the sheer, I would say this one didn't do a whole lot in terms of coloring it. The black did a pretty good job. The darker colors covered it. The Glimmer Glam, I like this one. This one's pretty fun. It did a great job. It did a good nice even coverage. You can really see all the good glitteriness in both of them. They're pretty fun. Uh, the stained glass. These ones did an okay job. I like the yellow better. The yellow just kind of, I think, meshed with the color of the texture paste beforehand. The black, it, it was not so great, in my opinion. It, it's, it's a gray, but you can still see in terms of coverage. Now, if this is the effect that you're going for, there it is. This is the effect you're going for, then great. It really depends on the project, in my opinion, about what you want to use these for. Here is the shimmers. And again, it just kind of gave it a coat. It did a pretty good job of coating. I like it. Here is the glimmer glaze. And the glaze did a really good job, but that's my mistake. It's not, it didn't do that on purpose. I touched it with something black. 
by accident. So sorry about that. But it did a really good job of kind of glazing over it and catching most of the little peaks and valleys and giving a nice good shimmer on top of that. And then as the paints would, it painted right over, no problem. Again, because it's a flat coat of paint and there's nothing shimmery inside, it's hard to tell the peaks and valleys. So if what I would normally do if I was just gonna cover over it, I would probably go back over now with some mist just to add some texture, like to allow the highs and lows to show up more. Cause right now it's hard to see how much texture is really there. And this is more of a, as you can tell, like I really can tell that there's a difference. There's a shine to this paint and this definitely has a matte cover. So the DIY decor paint definitely has more of a matte finish. There we go. It has more of a matte finish, whereas the high impact has more of a glossy finish. Now this is the one that I really wanted to know, the gesso. I use gesso in a lot of stuff, especially when I'm doing kind of the thin style projects where you take all the junk pieces and you lay them down and then you cover them all with gesso. And then you go back over and mist it, whatever color you want. And up to this point, I've been using glimmer mists. And to a point, I've had to add a lot of layers of glimmer mist to really achieve the look I want. Well, now I know which one I'm going to use. I am going to use baseboard. So let's just take a look and I'll show you why I'm saying that. If you can tell, now certain glimmer mists do a really good job, I think because the darker colors, they don't just bleed off and kind of run off. But as you can tell, here the yellow, if you've got a lot of texture and you've got lots of peaks and valleys and you've got lots of layers going on, it's gonna run off and notice how you're on the sides it didn't even catch the mist. So it didn't give a great coverage. I've had to go back and add two or three layers of mist before it really kind of coated the whole thing. Well, it's because I was using the wrong mist. I should have been using baseboard or chalkboard this entire time because look how good of a coverage. Now I can go back and add the glimmer if I want to. I can add the shimmer once I've given it a coat of something and then the shimmer and the glimmer mist will stick to this. So this will be my initial base coat is the baseboard because it did a fantastic job of coverage. I mean, just amazing, look at that. Awesome. Or even the chalkboard did a pretty good job. And you see some of the shimmer in there, not a whole lot, but it's there, which I love. So these are gonna be my go-tos for whenever I'm using a mist on any of my mixed media gessoed projects. The Simply Sheer did an okay job. It's not my favorite. It, it's okay. It's too light. Um, I, I definitely like these two better. Here is the Glimmer Glam. And it didn't, it kind of pooled up a little bit on this. It didn't give a nice good coat like I was hoping it would. But the glaze did. The glaze gave a nice great coat. I don't know if it's because the chunky glitter was making everything pool together a little bit. But the glaze did a fantastic job. Uh, the shimmers, as you can tell, it kind of bubbled up and pooled a little bit. This one, not too bad. You know, maybe if you just wanted to do a light something on it. Uh, the stained glass, it did the same thing. It kind of bubbled up and pooled and kind of ran together. It didn't give a nice, good, even coat, but it's kind of a cool effect, really. I like that coat. And then as Gesso should, it should allow paint to stick, which it did a phenomenal job. The paint stick, no problem on the DIY, or the high impact. And same with the DIY, did a great, great job. Moving on to the modeling paste. I just used the 13 Arts acrylic modeling paste. And here you can see, I try to add, it's really hard to see because it's white on white, but see I add a little bit of texture. There it goes to each of them. Some of them have more texture than others, but I really wanted to see how it would work with the peaks and valleys. So the Glimmer Mist, um, it hit the peaks and valleys really well, as you can see here, and it added a nice mist. Not a super great coverage covering the white, but it got there, it got pretty good. I still love the uh, baseboard. Um, you can just make out some of the peaks and valleys. I probably would go over and add glimmer mist on top of that now once it dried and do two layers. But here, look at this one. Really good job of hitting and some of the dark colors pulled together to make a really good color. Love this coverage. Um, this one's also pretty cool. I like the way that the chalkboard, it adds that little bit of sheen, but you can still see all the peaks and valleys. Great coverage on that. Here we have our Simply Sheer. You know, as it, it, it was fine. It probably wouldn't be my first pick for what I want to use for this, but it did a pretty good coverage. Not too bad. Um, here we have our, sorry, Glimmer Glam. And it, you know, just added, because it has the sparkles, it didn't hit all the valleys and peaks and it kind of bubbled up in some places. But you know, if you want that massive glittery effect, 
It's your go-to. Stained glass. You know, it added a glaze to it, but it didn't add a whole lot of coverage because it's, you know, it's a, it's a really transparent kind of a glaze paint. So you can still see a lot of the white under it. The shimmers did a really good job of coating it. Here you can really kind of see the sparkly effect on the shimmers. The black not as much, but it's a nice muted tone that it gave. Pretty cool. Here is the glimmer glaze. I like this one too. This one's pretty fun. Had a really cool, you can really see all the texture I had in all of the modeling paste and it really kind of gave a really cool glaze. And it kind of finishes, like it won't rub off on your fingers. It's also pretty fun. And then as the paints are supposed to, they did a nice good coat of coverage on the paint and really did a good job of seeing all the goodness that the modeling paste, like if you were gonna do a stencil, that was kind of the effect I was trying to go for the modeling paste. What would happen if you used a stencil? great coverage. Here's the DIY. So, all in all, they all worked really well. I still think across the board my favorite one is probably the baseboard. I need to stock up on those for all my basic needs. And then there's other fun ones. Like, I really do like the Glimmer Glaze and Glimmer Glam and the effect that they have. So, thanks for stopping by. Please check out all the other installments of this. This is part four, but there's still a part one, two, and three. Take a look at the iCart up in the corner. You can check out all the previous and all the ones after this for the uh, Tattered Angels Paint Lab. So thanks for stopping by. Please subscribe. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.